To use that inimitable phrase, you really couldn't make it up. Army top brass have kicked off a major stink by suggesting male troops can wear makeup. Currently, only female soldiers can wear cosmetics while on duty, but obsessed with proving the army is, quotes, an inclusive employer, some senior ranking duffers have announced they could bring this in as part of making the military more gender neutral. What virtue signaling vacuousness. Is it any wonder the army is thousands of soldiers short of its recruitment target? What with this latest lunacy and a multi-million pound advertising campaign targeting phone zombies, snowflakes and men who weep, you'd be excused for wondering just who the hell they're targeting to sign up. While it must provide emotional support to its troops, the army is designed to protect this nation and its interests. Regrettably, that might sometimes necessitate killing people. Ordering a male squaddy to do that just after he's applied his rouge and blusher is plainly nonsensical. Have the top brass gone totally bonkers in their bunkers? <laughs> Nick. Just take the rest of it off while you're talking. <laughs> First of all, that blusher is a very good cover on you. Thank you very much. Secondly, Richard. respect to the person who does your brows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Thirdly, hammer. I really don't understand why you're so exercised by this. The army is saying that men who serve can wear makeup if they want to. It's not making it compulsory <laughs> for no, men no, to wear no. makeup. And quite frankly, I just don't see what the fuss is about. I mean, I think people in public service, however, or people who are serving their country, what, whatever they're doing as long as they're doing a good job who really cares whether they're wearing makeup or not let's find out femi do you care no i mean well the point is if you're going to allow women to wear makeup in the army why wouldn't you allow men because in some instances as i pointed out perhaps in that introduction we're going to require people to do some pretty brutal things which if you've just come out of the makeup salon might not quite sit that well that doesn't answer my question about why women are not men because men, I just don't see that that's what you want to do if you go... Enough of me, I don't see that's what okay. you want to do if I go so, to the office. Do you know what you made me think? Let's, I was just going to say, doesn't let's make look. any sense. Yeah, well, hang on, Nick mentioned, recruit, Nick, Nick, Nick mentioned recruitment. We know there's a big problem with army recruitment in particular. I was just suddenly thinking of the stern-eyed Lord Kitchener saying, mm. your country needs you in 1914. Oh. That image still endures. Mm. He'd be spinning in his grave at this ludicrous attempt to feminise the army. Imagine I'm that tempted with nice high-definition well, browser. Yeah, but I'm tempted, to ma I'm tempted to make a bad taste joke, so I will. You Good. know, if you go and fight for Queen and Country, did, we didn't know they wanted to dress as Queen and Country. I mean, it is ridiculous. But this, is, this is all Carol. about ticking boxes, isn't it? it? Is this exactly is all that, about Carol. the Army's policy of inclusiveness. But, you know, I think that this will have done more to damage recruitment prospects yeah. than, than to actually improve it. I also think it's made I think it's made the Army a bit of a laughing stock, which is not fair to the, the soldiers who are currently serving. Look, I understand that the Army wants to get past the stereotypes. I get, I get that. But, like, like it or not, the fact is that a guy who's going to sign up to go fight and perhaps die for his country is not the kind of guy who's going to care whether or not he can wear lippy or mascara. How do you know that? And, but, How but, on well, earth could and, you and, possibly but, know but that, The Carol? most important thing here is that the army is supposed to be a crack fighting force. It's not supposed to represent the, com the composition of society. But again, why would, we, would you allow it for women, but not for because men? Because it's stupid. Five yeah. percent of men wear makeup, why according to a YouGov poll. And quite frankly... Yeah, but they're not all in the army, Phil. Let me introduce you to somebody. His name is Daniel Gray, and he is the founder of Warpaint for Men. So Warpaint is a really personal story for me. I got bullied in middle school due to the way I looked. So now I suffer with body dysmorphia every single day and it affects me greatly. So my story is one about mental health. I use makeup to build up my confidence, help me overcome my insecurities. It's different for everyone. People come to makeup for different ways and for different reasons. This is my story and I hope that Warpaint can help others too. So 
look, there's lots of reasons why um, men will choose to wear makeup, just as there is with women. Uh, no. Quite often, quite often, it does help people uh, feel more confident in life. And surely that's a good thing. Why would you object to that? Rachel, you want someone operating a submachine gun who's not confident in yes. life. I do no, not care do what that that question. Oh my God, whether yeah. they are confident in life or not is not relevant, is not germane to whether they're wearing makeup or so, not. I want them to be able to operate that machinery. Whether they're wearing mascara while they're doing it so is might, completely irrelevant to their might, capacity. They might be racked with emotional health issues, these poor individuals, and you want them in the Marines. Oh my goodness. You want them in the Marines. <laughs> there is a difference between having self insecurity, insecurity issues regarding how you you look and thinking you can take on the Taliban. Those are two completely different <laughs> things. Even if somebody sex. is trying to sign up for the army, I think the most people joining up aren't bothered about whether they can wear no. lippy or or no. mascara. So they're not bothered you? about so having. A, they're not worry. bothered about <laughs> having a counselor I, to talk to. What they want to know is whether how they're going to face battle. That's what they because want to know. The army is calamitously short of the number of personnel yes, it that should currently be employed. No the Royal Navy, spot on. Yeah. The Royal Air Force, spot yeah. on. They actually recruit their own. The army has outsourced it to a company that thinks it's a good idea to go after men who weep and presumably men who wear makeup. Yeah. They did target it. They did specifically target it. Can I just tell you, and, and Nick, you know, Sorry. there was much Andrew. mirth about this at the Conservative Party conference this week where I had the great joy to be there, of course. It yeah. was such fun. I'm sure everybody wishes they could be there too. But <laughs> the Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, in my view, got it absolutely absolutely right. I thought you were going to ask me the question on men wearing makeup that I noticed in the news today that they, apparently the army is consulting on men being allowed to wear makeup. The answer is uh, men will be allowed to wear makeup in the army as long as it's camouflage colour really and that'll be the uh, that'll be about as far as they're allowed. Absolutely right, absolutely. And, and I bumped into him and sort of spoke to him privately and he said this is exactly the worst sort of virtue signaling. That is not going to help exactly. army recruitment. And army recruitment is a big, big problem for the government. And let's all listen, particularly the viewer. I'm going to tell you what the army have actually said because they, they do seem to have changed their tone. Initially, it was, as an inclusive employer that recognises the diversity of its personnel, we are currently in the process of revising our guidance in this area to make it gender neutral. <laughs> Now, the pledge, actually, we specifically want it went back to them for clarification. They said they changed it. The Army is a modern and inclusive employer that recognises the diversity of our soldiers. But Queen's regulations currently state that while on duty, male soldiers may not wear makeup. Andrew, you and I have done enough press statements. Carol, that's rowing back, isn't it? It feels like it to me, absolutely. And also, don't you find it inconceivable that the Army's top brass are sitting in a room somewhere with all the problems that they have to do. And deal not enough with, soldiers. And not enough soldiers. And having to discuss whether men they, should be allowed and to. And Cara, they've got a whole unit to, which is dealing with gender neutral issues, so we mustn't talk about mankind, people kind. Or, I mean, you can't make okay, this stuff so up. This will damage recruitment. Femi. The underlying assumptions you're making one, that uh, men who cry are somehow worse for the army when they're actually more likely to be emotionally stable because they're regulating their emotions would properly. You want, your, Se would you want your back guarded in a trench by a man who regularly bursts into tears. <laughs> regularly or at a reason or at a whenever, reason. Whenever. <laughs> whenever. Once a fortnight. I don't Somebody mind. who I know is emotionally stable enough to recognize when the, when their emotions need to be released. You're in a trench, yes. you want him guarding your back. Yeah. Um, I would I would I would that'll, cheer, would, up, that'll cheer up the people on either side. Rather, rather than, rather than, <laughs> rather than <laughs> send them all into <laughs> It'll send them all into a deep depression. <laughs> rather than Henry. somebody rather than somebody who's bottled up all their emotions and can explode the at any yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. You I never exactly. said that there wasn't that. That's a false equivalent. I never took you down that road. The thing is, I don't understand. I mean, you're always saying that, you know, the liberal liberal virtue signaling, we get concerned with ridiculous things. This is one of the most ridiculous things it's to be not. concerned with. I've seen it really, We're literally, as long as people are able to do their job. Well, soldiers, Rachel. It really doesn't this is matter the army what they want to ridicule, Rachel. Yes, yes. People are laughing. Yeah, at are. what the army are doing. Um, and that isn't fair on the guys, the yeah, men and women who are serving them. Okay, let's, let's, flip it, let's flip it around. <laughs> are you saying that the women who wear makeup in the, in the army shouldn't be, shouldn't be in the army because no, how, how, can no. you, how can you operate a machine gun if you're covered in Maybelline? Is, 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 is that your point? Um, I've, I've got the army regs. The I've got the yes. army regs, Femi. You've led me into it neatly, 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 neatly even. Here's the regs for makeup. One, males, makeup is not to be worn. Two, females, makeup brackets, if worn, close brackets, is to be inconspicuous, brightly coloured nail varnish is not to be worn. That, for me, works. Yeah. So why, why the, the difference? Same? Yeah. <laughs>
have, it, have, have men allowed to wear inconspicuous well, makeup as well? Are they, going to wear, are they going to wear nail varnish too as they pull the machine gun trigger? And why would it matter if they did? I just don't get it. Oh. Super going round. Okay. Yeah. 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 We've got to leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Back to barracks, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Back to barracks, it's it. Now, Boris hasn't had the best of time since landing the top job, but this week things nearly ground to a halt. The Prime Minister was on his way to an event at his party's conference in Manchester when trouble started brewing. No sooner had one of the PM's aides handed him a cup of takeaway coffee than another aide, understood to be Number 10's operations chief Shelley Williams-Walker, snatched it away, saving him from a roasting by the eco-brigade. <laughs> What's this? Oop, oop, oop. I know. Dispose of the cops. Well, a few hours latte, sorry, later, Mr Johnson <laughs> took to social media to show he had no hard feelings. Shelley Williams Walker, for trying to keep your boss out of hot water, you are our straight up snatcher of the week. You could say it was all just a storm in a coffee cup. It just shows they've gone so environmentally friendly. I remember Michael Gove walking into number 10 just days after announcing a big crackdown on plastic and he <laughs> didn't have a disposable cup. Oh, dear. He had an interesting week with various stories regarding women, wasn't it? If it was one person saying something else or another woman grabbing his coffee cup, I think that was probably the least of his problems. I yeah. think so. He's cup. got yeah. a lot more going on. Yeah. But how did he emerge, him. Andrew, from it all? You, actually, I, I was there as well. Yeah, you were... well, I mean, I've, after, after the... Uh, Theresa May years when she could suck, suck the life out of room the moment she started her speech. <laughs> it was rumbustious, it was noisy, he put great enthusiasm in it. There was no new lines in his speech, but it was not. well delivered you and it. he's got the Tory party on side. You enjoyed it, Rachel? Um, I can't say that enjoy is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> OK. We expected that. That's all we we've did. got time for this week. But if you want to join in the debate, just search for The Pledge on Twitter. And don't forget, you can take the debate with you by listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or whichever app you prefer. Thanks for watching.